YouTubes! Welcome back to James Recommends. I realized that I'm not going to get to record one of these for the next few weeks, and so since I'm really excited about doing these next two, I figured I'd just get a couple in the can so we don't miss any. Uh, today, I want to do something weird. I want to side-by-side -side two games. I want to put Civilization Beyond Earth next to Endless Legend and talk about them both. Because they're both actually very good games that suffer from almost identical problems, and I think they teach us a lot as designers. Uh, they're both, they both take the fundamental civilization concept, right? Many of you know, but just in case, Civilization Beyond Earth, sci-fi version of Civ. Endless Legend, fantasy version of Civ. Uh, in both of them, you have a radial tech tree. So instead of having the civilization tech tree, which is linear but branching, you've got a sort of starting point, and then you can go in a radial fashion out from that starting point. This actually creates an immense difficulty as a designer because there are so many more possibilities for where your player could conceivably or at least reasonably be on a radial tech tree than on a linear one, especially one that sort of has prerequisite demands like Civilization does, that you can never really balance for it, right? In Civilization, I can only go get so far on that tech tree before I have to get some skills in some of the other branches in order to continue down one of the paths. In Beyond Earth, functionally, I could go all the way down this side of the radial tech tree and never touch this side if I wanted, right? I couldn't, I don't even have to get the first beginning tech. That's an amazingly difficult thing to balance. And if you look at both Beyond Earth and uh, and this legend, they both suffer a little bit from this because they both have exploitable paths, very, uh, very clearly dominant paths that you can take down that tech tree. So just be careful, and when you're thinking about your game, if you're thinking about doing a radial rather than a linear tech tree, just realize that it is exponentially more difficult as a designer to deliver on these because of how many more possibilities that are technically reasonable for the player to be doing that come up when they don't sort of have that constraint of a linear tree. Second, a lot, both these games sort of try and patch over this and add to their fantasy or sci-fi cred by presenting you with a lot of uh, content at the outset. When you begin Beyond Earth, there's just a lot of different resource types. And Endless Legend is probably four or five times as many as even Beyond Earth. There's so many of these strange resources that you don't really know what they do, and this is another problem that compounds the previous issues. Because these exist in a fantasy and sci-fi world, well, civilization gets away with a lot because we have direct analogs. I kind of understand what a field of wheat uh, may do in a civilization game because I know what that means in my real world Earth. I have no idea what a biomass might do in uh, Beyond Earth. I have no idea what a tree of life might do in Endless Legend in terms of what resources it's going to give me. And so I have to go back and look that up and look it up every time. Uh, these, these are both uh, an attempt sort of by the designer to, to fill out the world by creating great numbers of these and to make it feel like a foreign and fantasy or sci-fi place. But simply by being foreign and fantasy and sci-fi, the great number of these different resource types and all these other things that they put in uh, become that much more difficult for the player to grok. Okay, so that said, uh, and the same thing with the tech tree, with the unit types, uh, I understand what an archer does. I don't necessarily understand that a ranger is actually a ranged unit, right? That, that isn't necessarily intuitive in, uh, in Beyond Earth, even though it's in the name of the game, uh, in the name of the unit. So okay, so those are a lot of the problems that they're dealing with, and this attempt to patch over with content makes them nearly uh, unapproachable, and it's compounded by the sci-fi nature of that content. 
that said, they both are actually good games. I want to talk about Endless Legend because a lot of you guys probably know about Beyond Earth. I th personally think that Beyond Earth is good, but not great. I trust po folks at Firaxis to patch until it is great or give us expansions. Two expansions down the road, I'm sure Beyond Earth will be great. Uh, I originally thought Endless Legend was quite bad. Uh, I was mistaken. I made sure to give it more time because I also understood that I thought it was quite bad because I did not fully understand it and had a very difficult time fully understanding all of its mechanics and civilization type games are games that demand that you as a player understand all of its mechanics if you want to play at a reasonable level of difficulty. If you are looking for fantasy civilization, I actually very highly recommend uh, Endless Legend. The only issue is you're going to have to put some time in and they don't explain stuff well, the tutorial is not enough, you have hero units that have, and every unit has a dozen different abilities which often you can't mouse over when you really want to. You have to go into a special screen to be able to get the mouse over pop up from them. Uh, you've got towns that work sort of like civilization, but not exactly like civilization. Basically all the townsfolk in it, in any town, function like specialists. You can assign them to whether or not you want to produce science or uh, production or money or what have you. Uh, and there's other rules for what how you expand your city to also get the resources produced by the territory around you. So there's all these stuff that are a little bit different. Uh, there's all these minor factions which you can take over and incorporate units and minor factions into your races. There's this radial tech tree that you're not really sure what's going on. You have actually multiple radial tech trees that as you grow an era, uh, if you get enough from your first radial tech tree, then you can move to the second radial tech tree if you want to. So there's all this stuff going on. There's eight different factions. They are vastly different. You even have the old 4X uh, convention of being able to create your own faction, which is really interesting. But all this is a lot of complexity. In the end, I've decided it's worth it. It's actually really compelling. I mean, it's got a really interesting world. It's kind of got this dark fantasy thing and they can pull it off. Uh, it's It's got this quest system which is far more robust actually than the one in Beyond Earth. So it's got all these things. I mean, if you like Beyond Earth but you want a fantasy civilization, really play in this legend but just know what you're getting into and know that it's gonna feel like a brick wall and then you're gonna start to get it and it's gonna feel cumbersome because you're gonna lose and you're not even gonna know why you're losing so badly. And then finally when you get it, it feels like a really good game. Uh, so, that said, um, yeah, this week I recommend both Beyond Earth and Endless Legend with the caveats that they both suffer from the same problems and if you get a chance, check them out side by side because I think you'll find the comparison fascinating. Alright, see you all next week. <laughs>